my name is Jonah Gelzo with MacTuts Plus. You might be familiar with me from my tutorials over on our sister site, AudioTuts Plus. I made my final move over to the OS X platform when all the hype about OS X Leopard's release was still fresh. And after embracing all the things that the Mac platform has to offer, I never looked back. I will admit I still have my old PC around whenever I want to game, but that's not too bad to admit, is it? Needless to say, since then, I've learned a thing or two along my Macintosh journey. And one of those things is, well, that Apple isn't perfect. Just like my 2008 15-inch MacBook Pro. As quoted from Apple's website, in July 2008, NVIDIA publicly acknowledged a higher than normal failure rate for some of their graphics processors due to a packaging defect. At that same time, NVIDIA assured Apple that Mac computers with these graphics processors were not affected. However, after an Apple-led investigation, Apple has determined that some MacBook Pro computers with the NVIDIA GeForce 8600M GT graphics processor may be affected. If the NVIDIA graphics processor in your MacBook Pro has failed or fails within four years of the original date of purchase, a repair will be done free of charge, even if your MacBook Pro is out of warranty. Sounds all wonderful, except for those of you, including myself, who witnessed their beautiful, precious, and well cared for MacBook Pro die before our eyes after that four year free service offer. My MacBook's timely passing occurred just two months after the service period. And you guessed it, Apple wanted nothing to do with it. And what was worse was that it cost me $65 for an Apple authorized service provider to click a button, run a test, and tell me that. The only real option they had to offer was to replace the faulty logic board at a price totaling half of the price of the laptop that I paid four years ago. However, with some deep soul searching and a few nights of grieving over my sickly Mac, I was determined to save her. Some way, somehow. And after scoring the internet forums, I found there are so many grieving individuals just like me. However, for many, they had found hope. They had found a way to revive their dead MacBook Pros. They found a way to bring it back to life. How is this possible, you may ask? Trust me, it is. To put it bluntly, you have to bake your MacBook Pro. Yeah, that $2,000 you worked your butt off to be able to buy your once glorious MacBook is going straight in the oven. I'm sure right now, you're completely freaking out about what I just told you that you're gonna have to do. All right, I exaggerated a little bit. I'm not asking you to put your entire MacBook Pro in the oven just the logic board containing the graphics processing unit or GPU. If your head's strong and already popped your MacBook in the oven, get it out now or you're screwed. And no, you can't hold me liable for your actions. Anyway, before I take you through the process of completely dismantling your laptop in order to retrieve the logic board to then prep for baking, I first wanted to address the physical symptoms your MacBook Pro will be displaying or not displaying since this whole thing has to do with a faulty graphics card chip in the first place. Here are some common symptoms that will be evident if your MacBook Pro is suffering from a faulty NVIDIA GeForce 8600M GT graphics chip. Here's what to look for. Distorted or scrambled video on the computer screen, no video on the computer screen or external display, even though the computer is on. Again. You should only be affected by this issue if your computer has the 8600M GT graphics processor on board and is one of the models I list. Specific products affected, MacBook Pro 15 inch and 17 inch models with NVIDIA GeForce 8600 GT graphics processors, MacBook Pro 17 inch 2.4 GHz and MacBook Pro 15 inch 2.4 2.2 GHz, MacBook Pro early 2008. These computers were manufactured between approximately May 2007 and September 2008. Here's my laptop. I'll boot it up and show you what I shockingly saw for the first time just a few weeks ago as of this posting of the tutorial. As you can see, all hell breaks loose. Not a pleasant sight. Enough of the problem though. Let's get on with the solution. If you've determined your MacBook suffers from the symptoms above, then follow me and let's start by taking apart our laptops. 
So we'll go ahead and flip our MacBook Pro over and we'll go ahead and take out the battery first. So just pull these little actuators down there and that'll disengage the MacBook battery. Go ahead and twist it over. First, what you're gonna wanna make sure to have is a computer tool set. I got mine from Otherworld Computing through MacSales.com. So basically a set consisting of tweezers, some little plastic pries for kind of undoing screens, undoing cases, etc. Very helpful. Some needle nose pliers. Uh, another handy tool just for kind of grabbing hold on something and locking it and being able to pull it. So, And then our different assortment of screwdrivers. So this is our Phillips, which is a number double zero which we'll be using primarily, along with assortment of some flatheads and also torque screwdrivers as well. Again, what we're mainly gonna be using out of the torque screwdrivers is the T6. So again, the main tools are gonna to be the Phillips number double zero and the torque T6. It's also very handy to have some small plastic containers nearby just to be able to put the different screws that we're taking out of our laptop to keep them organized. So first we're going to want to take three small screws out of the this back little plate here and this gives us access to our memory, our RAM. So we need to take that off in order to get to some additional screws which you'll see in just a second here. On the bottom here we have some more uh, screws that we need to undo uh, with Phillips. Here we have some torque screws. So get your torque T6 tool out and go ahead and remove those. And then we have additional screws in the back here longer ones, holds the backing of the computer. And then we also have four small screws holding the case together on each side. So just remove those one at a time. We'll go ahead and flip it to the back. Two small screws on the rear of the laptop. Move those again. I typically like to keep all the screws associated with holding the case together as a whole and put those in one plastic container and then all screws that uh, I take off inside the actual computer in regards to the logic board, fans, that kind of thing. I also keep in a separate container just so I can have some differentiation. So with those screws out we'll go ahead and open up our laptop and then start to remove the keyboard. It opens up real easy from the back but you kind of have to work work it a little bit to pry it off from the bottom. There are some plastic clips which hold the front part of the case together. It's also handy to use one of the plastic pry bars if you have those available to kind of slide through and get that off. As you'll notice by flipping it up there's a small little ribbon with a clip attached to the logic board of the computer. So we'll just go ahead and easily pop that up and remove the keyboard. Next we'll go ahead and remove the RAM, push the little metal tabs out to the side, and then that'll give us access to the RAM. Go ahead and just pull that up and then out. Next let's start by trying to get our logic board out. It's also handy to have a just knife nearby, just a butter spreading knife or something of that nature uh, just to be able to kind of get up underneath um, some of this different tape that we need to remove in order to get to some of our screws and some of our connection points. So right now we're just undoing all the different screws holding down our optical drive. So with those removed just pop that off. Got some more ribbons that we'll go ahead and disconnect with our plastic pry bars. And tweezers also are very helpful for picking up the tape sections that we need to remove as well. 
If the tape is still sticky, you can go ahead and place those back on later on. A lot of the tape for me was really worn, so I went ahead and just threw it away. You'll also notice as you get into the computer, basically what we're trying to do is remove any connection point to the primary part of our MacBook Pro, the logic board. So we just need to undo every screw, every mounting point to be able to successfully remove that completely from the inside of our case. There's a lot of connection points as far as small cables that connect to a locking point with pin connections. So just always gently just kind of pick up the cable part and try to work that up and out. Some points slide out of their connection points, other, others just kind of snap down, vertically snap down, and then can be popped out. I didn't actually mean to remove that fan completely, so if you don't have to, I'd advise against that, just because there's a backing sticky tape that holds or gives connection from the fan to a heat sink point to, to get hot air dispersed. So just continue removing all different screws, holding down that logic board. It'll encompass a variety of normal Phillips screws and torque screws as well. Make sure to remove all connection points. And there we have it. Our logic board is officially out. So we're gonna go ahead at this point and start prepping it for baking. As you can see here, here are the different processors, GPU, and then here are some little anchor points that hold the motherboard in position. Make sure to remove these plastic little points here, otherwise they will get baked and will be unusable after the baking process. So always make sure to take those little plastic points off. And then also go ahead and remove all the different foam padding as well as any stickers on it containing serial numbers, that thing, because that will just get baked. Next with some rubbing alcohol, take a cleaning pad or Q-tip and go ahead and clean off the contact points on each of the processor GPUs. So basically what we want to do is clean them off completely, get all of that thermal grease off because we do not want to bake that in the oven. As you'll see here the connection points on the bottom side of the case, we'll go ahead and clean that as well because after the baking process we'll want to reapply thermal paste so we can have a nice good connection there for dispersing the heat. Next go ahead and take some baking foil and wrap a small cookie tray and then take smaller bits of foil and go ahead and roll those up into small balls. We'll make four of them and this will help us to keep our logic board elevated during the baking process. Just line those up four different points. And there we go. We are now ready to bake our logic board. Go ahead and set your oven to 375 degrees. We'll be wanting to bake that for seven and a half minutes. I went ahead and double checked to make sure that my temperature was correct by using a, an external temperature gauge. We'll go ahead and open the oven and place our logic board in the oven after it's been preheated to 375. Again, make sure it's preheated to 375 degrees before you place it in the oven. Then right away, go ahead and start your stopwatch or timer for seven and a half minutes. And as soon as we hit that seven and a half minute mark, first pray, then remove the logic board and we should be good to go. Next we'll want to take our thermal paste and apply it to the contact points on our CPU and GPU, our graphic processor unit. And this will help to disperse the heat from these different processing chips to the underside of our case 
which leads to metal fins to the fans so that we can disperse the heat from our computer. So again, you wanna make sure that you fully cover these chips with the thermal paste so we have nice even coverage. So when we reapply uh, our logic board, we're not gonna have any issues with uh, heat dispersion. This is very, very key. A lot of the problems due towards MacBook Pros failing again after the baking process has been largely due to people not removing the old thermal paste before baking it and then not reapplying it afterwards so there wasn't proper heat dispersion. With the thermal paste ready to go, we'll go ahead and reinstall our logic board, reversing all the steps that we took prior. Again, make sure to put back all the screws in their proper positions as well as reseating all the different connection points with the connection points and pins. With the logic board successfully mounted and the RAM installed, we'll go ahead and flip over our MacBook and we'll now reinstall the keyboard. Go ahead and press down in the front, make sure to clip in all the plastic clip sections. And then we'll go ahead and screw the case back together. Replace the RAM cover. Reseed all the screws. Go ahead and replace our laptop battery. And that's it. All that's left to do is to plug it in. Open it up and pray and hope that we did everything correctly. Just like this, we've extended the life of our MacBook Pro. We brought it back to life and now something that was just a big expensive brick is now fully functioning again. And again, the main process behind this is just reflowing all the solder points on the GPU chip. Uh, essentially, it wasn't fastened correctly, kind of had some issues that way. So essentially, we just heated up the solder points just enough to kind of reflow so they seat more properly and give us a, a better connection. Well, by watching this tutorial, you now have the tools you need to bring your defective MacBook Pro back to life. I wish you luck with your endeavors and go ahead and leave a comment under this post and let me know if this worked for you and if you're typing on your MacBook that's been brought back to life. Appreciate you watching. Again, my name is Jonah Gelza with Mac Tuts Plus. I'll see you next time. Exclusively from Sound Candy. Found only on audiojungle.com.